Now, back to Access Tech Live, the latest in tech and accessibility with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. And we're back on Access Tech Live with me, Stephen Scott, Mark Aflalo with me as well. We're covering the Microsoft Surface event that is happening right now. And Zach Bowden is the senior editor over at Windows Central. Uh, can't believe we booked you in today, Zach. What timing. Uh, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, good to have you here. So, uh, of course, uh, the event is happening at the moment. It's a Surface event, so we're talking hardware, which is the thing that gets most of us excited here at Access Tech Live. So what are some of the new announcements you can tell us about that have happened so far? So yeah, Microsoft has unveiled two new products today. They've unveiled the Surface Pro 10 for business and the Surface Laptop 6 for business. The for business sort of a fix there being that these are only available to Microsoft's commercial customers. So you won't find them in Best Buy and Amazon, but you can head to the Microsoft store online and purchase one yourself if it's something you really want. These are really designed for sort of being purchased in bulk by large enterprises or educational establishments. But there are some new upgrades here. We do have Intel Core Ultra chips powering both the Surface Pro 10 and Surface Laptop 6, uh, which offer two times faster performance over the previous Surface Pro and Surface Laptop, which I think were powered by Intel 12th gen chip. Uh, we have new uh, RAM options up to 64 gigabytes for the first time in both Surface Pro oh, and wow. Surface Laptop and um, a number of display and webcam upgrades as well. But hardware wise, Zach, nothing has changed, right? This is the same form factor. They look identical. Uh, it's really under the hood. And I find that super interesting because, you know, why separate business and consumer? There are, do you think we're going to have some kind of redesign down the road in a couple of months in May when they announce consumer stuff? Unlikely, right? Well, you'd be surprised. Microsoft is planning a second wave of hardware this spring. Today's announcements are the business stuff, which do have the same designs as the last gen. And the reason for that is enterprises don't really like change. You know, some of them build special cases or point of service point. desks or stands for these this hardware. So when the design changes, that can usually affect their flow and stuff. So. For the business models, they've maintained the same design, but Microsoft is planning a more consumer-facing version of these devices, which they're expected to announce in May. And those devices would include, um, well, they'll be powered by ARM processors instead of Intel, uh, as well as the Surface Laptop will have a slightly tweaked design with thinner display bezels. Zach, I find it interesting that um, these are some of the first laptops or devices we're seeing with the new Core Ultra chips. Normally, Microsoft kind of waits a bit for that. Do you think it's a significant move for them to do this this early and focus on business before consumers? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, historically, Surface has stepped back when it comes to adopting the latest chips from Intel. And I think that's partly to do with the fact that they were burned quite hard with Skylake back in 2015. They were the first to adopt Skylake, and Skylake launched with a number of issues. So ever since then, they've sort of waited a little bit to adopt new Intel chips. However, this time around, things are different. Intel Core Ultra chips also come with dedicated NPUs, which are required for some of the upcoming uh, Windows AI features that are expected to launch later this year. And so, Microsoft didn't have a choice, really. If they wanted to have these new PCs support some of the new AI features coming later this year, they needed to adopt this chip with the dedicated NPUs, which enable features like uh, Windows Studio Effects, which uses AI to um, um, enhance like a video feed or a microphone with, with noise background removal, things like that. It's interesting, isn't it? Because, of course, you've got all this new hardware coming out, and it's great, and these new chips are going in there. And we'll see, certainly, a change for consumers uh, in May when that announcement happens. But I wonder if it's a bit confusing for consumers. I mean, Apple have made it a little bit simple, haven't they? It's M and then a number, and then when that number goes <laughs> up, that means that's good. We all understand what's that's new and that's better. Uh, but it's a bit more difficult when you're talking about ultra cores and you know all these names that people yeah. go, well, hang on, what is this? What do I buy? Yeah, it's a shame, really. That's not in Microsoft's control, unfortunately. Since Microsoft doesn't make its own chips, it can't really go about telling other companies how to brand their own chips. That's something Qualcomm and Intel are just terrible at. You know, in the past, Microsoft used to create custom versions of the Qualcomm chip that was on the market. So they had the Microsoft SQ1, SQ2, SQ3, which were just rebranded Qualcomm chips. But I don't know if they're going to keep doing that. They might. Just, I think Qualcomm may say, hey, Microsoft, can you stop doing that? We want you to use our branding for this. You know, Snapdragon X Elite isn't the worst name in the world for a chip, I guess, but it's definitely not as clean as the M2, M3, as you mentioned. 
Yeah, I, I mean, of course, the reason we're all excited about the chips, and I think the reason that, that I'm kind of more interested in this event than perhaps I would normally be, uh, considering this is a business-focused event, is the fact that we're starting to see the kind of hardware coming out, as Mark says, under the hood, that is going to power all of these new AI features. Where are we today with all of this, Zach? I mean, are, are the chips powerful enough to do a lot of this work on device, or do we still have to reach into the cloud? So as of right now, much of what you do in regards to, to AI on a PC does reach out to the cloud. That's happening off your device. But with these Intel Core Ultra chips and the upcoming Qualcomm chips, some of that functionality will be moved to being done on device because the NPUs are finally getting to a point where that can happen. Uh, Microsoft hasn't announced anything specific just yet, but they've made it perfectly clear that they do want to be able to do this on the device. Things like being able to um, handle specific co-pilot commands locally rather than sending everything to the cloud to be processed first. Things like uh, image generation on device, that's something that's definitely coming. The only real AI features we have right now that are processed on device within Windows is the Windows Studio FX stuff, which, as I mentioned, is able to enhance video feeds and, and microphone feeds. I should mention NPU stands for uh, Neural Processing Unit, which is what obviously powers a lot of that on-device AI stuff. Zach, what does an event like this tell you, with your experience, about Microsoft's roadmap for the next couple of years? So Microsoft, I think, are branding these as their first AI PCs. And the, the term AI PC is something you're going to hear a lot this year from not just Microsoft, but other OEMs as well. You may have really heard it from the likes of Dell and, and, and Lenovo. Um, this is the umbrella term for PCs with NPUs. And for, in regards to Surface, the, the, the goal ideally here is to have every Surface PC going forward ship with a built-in NPU and also be available with ARM. I know that hasn't been announced today, but at some point this year, that will start becoming the case where when they announce new hardware, where there will be an ARM option alongside Intel if there is an Intel one. And that's because Microsoft wants to elevate Windows on ARM to just normal standards. Like right now, I think there's a bit of a stigma with Windows and ARM where it's either slower or it has compatibility issues. Microsoft wants you to forget about all of that. They reckon these chips, these upcoming Qualcomm chips are good enough so that the, 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 a normal everyday user won't notice the difference between an Intel PC and an ARM PC. Compatibility wise, the emulation layer should be able to brute force through performance issues, which has been a problem in the past that the Qualcomm chips were never that good up until now. And so emulated apps ran a little bit slow. I did Clearly, that will no longer be the case, but we'll obviously have to wait and see uh, for when we get that hardware later this year. Yeah, I mean, you know, my experience is that the best way to experience Windows is on a Mac. Uh, and I know some people don't like me saying that, uh, but uh, that's my experience. Uh, and, you know, that's an interesting thing because, of course, there is ARM. It is silicon, essentially, as, as Apple calls it, but it's, it's ARM processors. So, you know, clearly we're seeing a move towards that. Do you think it's an overall shift towards I mean, I know it's different with Windows, right? It's different with Microsoft overall because there's so much legacy out there. And still, you know, I know there's still organizations still running floppy disks in their systems and old versions of Windows. So it's going to take a long time to get not. everyone on board. <laughs> oh, that's true. It is absolutely true. Uh, but that's the problem, right? So it does take longer. So is this more of a gradual shift, unlike Apple, that can just change like in two seconds? Yeah, and, and I don't think it's accurate to even say it will be a shift. I think ideally we're never going to see Microsoft move, move away from Intel and AMD. That Windows will always support those processors. It's more bringing ARM um, up to exist, coexisting alongside those other architectures. So you can make a choice. Would you like a PC with, a, with a, an Intel chip or would you like a PC with an ARM chip? Both Microsoft wants the you know everybody to see as equal sort of competitors versus, you know, Intel's up here and, and, and Qualcomm's down here, or, or Apple's arm is up here and Windows' arm is down here. It's, it's Microsoft wants everybody to see arm as the same as whatever else is out there on the market as well. Zach, I know you've got to go pick apart all the announcements and figure out what it means for the future. Uh, we'll have you back on in a couple months when they announce some consumer stuff. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Coming up here on Access Tech Live, we're going to wrap things up with uh, your answers to our question of the day. What annual event do you look forward to most and why? Stick around. We'll be back in a moment. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back.